welcome. I hope you're having a great start of your week. Hope your new year is off to a fulfilling and satisfying and even reflective start. Today I want to talk about uh, life uh, being a practice. When I got into meditation, I got the downloads that I got for myself. They're very interesting. I will not be sharing because <laughs> they are for me to know and for me to experience and discover along the way. But what came on the tail end of that when I asked, you know, what message wants to be shared with the collective today? What guidance do we have for the collective going into this week? And it was really about focusing on life, just being a practice and all that entails. And what I mean by that is when we view life as a practice, as an opportunity, a sort of a dress rehearsal, you know, to live and breathe life into uh, our truth and our values and our highest ideals. Um, when we realize that it's a practice, we allow ourselves the freedom to sort of stumble, to make mistakes, to fail. And kind of like when I was back, back when I was playing football, you know, my philosophy was I was going to go 110%. And if I made a mistake, I was going to make a mistake at 110%. And I was going to learn from that mistake. So that at the end of the day, nobody could argue that I wasn't playing hard and that I wasn't giving my best, even if I messed up. Uh, I think there's a lot to be said about that, personally. Maybe that's just because it was my own little philosophy and I'm trying to make myself feel better. <laughs> But uh, I do think there's something to that. And I think that it's important for us in our day-to-day -day life to give ourselves the freedom to just practice, to make mistakes, to explore, to push boundaries, to stumble, to calibrate. Because at this point for me in my journey, and especially in the work that I do now, uh, working with other people and getting an insight and a view into you know, what's their growth? What's the spiritual path they're on? What kind of qualities and characteristics are, are growing and being forged? You know, how are, the, how are people stepping into a more full, authentic version of themselves through this process and on this journey? And, you know, one of the things that I've learned is we have to, we have to calibrate. Like it's a constant process of trial and error, of doing, and learning by doing and really just kind of seeing what works and how it works and in what way does it work and with what intention does it work the best and when I say it I just mean you know whatever action we're taking whether that's learning to speak our truth learning to step into our power more fully learning how to be a better listener learning how to be more cooperative learning how to be more assertive in some cases. It's like everybody's on a different journey. Everybody's learning different skills and acquiring different tools and uh, essentially just growing and nurturing and nourishing a different part of ourselves. Really that's what this path is about is to use the sports analogy, you know, at practice all week, you, you, you work out, you know, you get strong, you work on your power, you work on your explosiveness, you work on your strength. And you go out on the field and you do a bunch of drills and stuff that just mimic the movements of the game and they mimic the movements that you're going to be doing on the field. And then when you get into to, um, scrimmaging with each other, you know, you if you're on offense, you, you run your plays and your offense against the scout defense. And the scout defense is there to just mimic and um, replicate what... Uh, the team you're playing is going to do and that's so that you can condition yourself to seeing the defensive schemes they're going to they're going to use or to understand where certain people are going to be in certain formations and it conditions you right it allows you to uh, mentally and physically to sort of adapt and adjust to what you're going to see on friday or saturday night and uh in that way you're stronger and more prepared to uh then meet that challenge when it comes Hopefully y'all are football fans and you understand what I just said. <laughs> it's playoff time, so I'm I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely in football mode. So life, in a lot of ways, is kind of like you know a scrimmage. It's not a battle, but it's kind of like a scrimmage where 
uh, what what our soul and what God and what the universe puts in front of us are opportunities to grow and opportunities to to live and demonstrate whatever play we're here to run you know um, to keep it in that football analogy and so people come along on our journey and opportunities big and small present themselves to to practice and demonstrate what it is we're learning and what it is we're growing and nourishing and that's why inevitably on our path when we set the intention to do something one of the very first things that happens <laughs> is that is that we are like met with sort of a challenge that checks us it's like oh are you sure you're ready you want to go this direction and it might be an intellectual or, a, or an emotional thing we might feel some resistance even in, inside of ourselves and that's like that's like stepping into the first the first play of the scrimmage it's like the first hit it's like oh I'm, I want to go that direction but oh, I'm not sure I'm ready for it and so what we do is we continue to persist and we continue to practice and we demonstrate that play and we run that play over and over again until we're not just hit right at the line. We, we, uh, we know how to very adeptly uh, navigate, run the play and be successful in sort of you know, executing uh, what it is that we're meant to do. So lots of, uh, lots of sports analogy here. But all that to say, the best part about practice is that in practice, we know that we're just learning. We know that we're trying it out. We're experimenting. We're finding what works. We're finding our bearings so that when it comes time to, uh, to play for real, um, that we really have a good handle on what we're doing. Now, the magical thing about life is that <laughs> life's a practice and it's also the game at the same time. And so uh, in that sort of paradoxical way, we want to give ourselves the freedom to explore and to experiment and to calibrate and to adapt and adjust and to grow uh, but at the same time you know there's there's real world sort of effect cause and effect and consequence of our decisions and our choices but the thing is to be kind to ourselves in that process in that process of calibration realizing that life is at its essence a practice it's a constant uh, demonstration over and over and over stepping into situations and working on those parts of ourselves that want to grow that's the challenge that's the challenge part portion of it and the reality is without that challenge portion without that little bit of you know that little resistance on the line um, we don't grow we don't evolve and we don't become a bigger more expanded more aware version of ourselves which at the end of the day technically is fine uh, there's nothing wrong with that it's just on this journey in my experience uh, it's just sort of this inevitable inevitable process of growth and evolution that we're called to and it's it's where the river is flowing you know whether whether we whether we like it or not or whether we're gonna swim with the current or not so today's message at its essence is really about this week try and just view your life more as a practice and and in viewing life as a practice as an, an opportunity to demonstrate to sort of experiment explore uh, to make mistakes and then fix that in the next time and next effort um, give yourself the freedom to to do those things and to not judge yourself in the process to not get down on yourself to not feel shame or guilt about just learning how to do this thing called life you know it's just it's a practice yes it's also the game at the same time but uh, when we put all that pressure on ourselves and we judge and we shame and we guilt or we get in our head or we keep ourselves small well then we've we've we then essentially taken ourselves out of the game so it's like by to really be in the game we got to view life as a practice again this is very paradoxical <laughs> to really be in the game we really have to view life as a practice and be willing and open to in a very non-judgmental way allowing ourselves to creatively explore uh, and demonstrate these lessons that we're learning and to step into our power and to step into our authenticity and 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 calibrate that and find the ways in which that feels good find that uh, find the ways in which that is cooperative and collaborative with the people around us um, to find the ways into more balance and more harmony uh, not just within ourselves but then with the people in the world around us because essentially all of us are on this journey of finding more balance and more wholeness in ourselves if I was going to put it in, a, you know, wrap it up, uh, this journey that we're on, yes, it's about growing and nourishing a different uh, new aspects of ourselves and growing into more um, sort of a more full, authentic version of ourselves. But really, at the end of the day, it is about harmony and balance within. And when I do readings for people, 
you know, in these, I've been doing tons of these year long forecasts and these check ins. They're very long, they last like 60 minutes, 70 minutes sometimes uh, of guidance and information about what wants to come into balance inside for someone. Uh, what wants to come into wholeness and then looking at the year ahead and looking at basically what parts of this uh, of, of someone is, are going to be challenged in the year ahead. So I've definitely come to you, view life as this constant process of calibration and finding harmony and balance and it begins inside the individual first and that begins with us. And that begins with our practice and our striving towards, not even striving, being open to I'm really losing a, it's hard for me to talk in terms of like very active and like assertive terms because I'm learning, right now I'm in a phase of just learning so much more about passivity and being fluid and adaptable and opening up. <laughs> so sometimes I catch myself talking in assertive ways which feels a little bit uh, out, out of sync for me at the moment. But uh, opening up and allowing ourselves uh, the experiences and uh, that bring us into more harmony and more balance within ourselves. now. When we become more harmonious and balanced within ourselves, the next step of that though is now the outside world is going to respond. So the people that are around you, the organizations that you're associating with, and the things that you're doing are all going to be impacted by this newfound harmony and balance, this practice of calibration that you're moving through. Uh, again, whether it's you're learning how to speak your, speak your truth more often uh, and more assertively, that might be what brings you into more balance. It also might be what brings your community, your environment into more balance. Maybe you're being called to be more still and more quiet and that's what's required right now to bring you into harmony, to more balance. And that process is also gonna impact the lives and the people and the environment around you. But it's a practice. Nobody's got all the answers. Nobody's doing it right. I don't know if anybody's ever doing it right. <laughs> you're just kind of doing it and it's either bringing more balance or not. And uh, more harmony or not. Uh, and it's this constant dance, you know, so life really is it's a practice, but it's it's also the game It's the game and it's the practice all in one But I think that in our mind and in our hearts if we can view it as a practice as an opportunity That each moment each breath each experience is an opportunity to demonstrate what we know or what we think we know and then be reflective enough to see when I take action in this way, or when I take non-action in this way, this is the this is the result. <sighs> then we get into a process of consciously calibrating, right? We we are consciously practicing. We're being aware. Oh, I'm feeling this stuff come up. I know I'm being challenged to give voice to my emotions. Well, let me do that. When the first time we do it, it's like bah! <laughs> and maybe there's somebody that's on the receiving end of that is like, whoa, what the hell was that? And it doesn't land, you know, and we're like, okay, but I got that out, you know, I got, I got to speak up, I got to speak my truth, okay, so step one, speaking truth, done. Um, but wow, I really unloaded on that person, I said a lot of really mean and terrible things that probably hurt their feelings, or it did hurt their feelings. Um, that ended up causing, okay, so now, where do I go from here? I know I have the courage and the strength to speak up, so what's the next step, you know? How do I, how do I find the balance and harmony in myself to now speak that in a way that doesn't totally, like, billy club somebody over the head with what just came out uh, that's an example and I use that as an example because learning to speak up has been a has been a big lesson for me in learning how to how to give a voice to my pain or my suffering uh, or my anger this has been a this has been a process for me so that's why that one came up so yeah it's a practice be kind to yourself in the process and also be kind to others in the process realize others other people are practicing too everybody's practicing this stuff so I feel like if we view it as a practice we give ourselves the freedom and the flexibility to make mistakes to quote fail to explore uh, but also we still seize the opportunity to demonstrate to practice to rehearse to give stuff a try to gain experiences and to gain wisdom from those experiences and apply them uh, every step of the way so all right folks there you have it life is a practice uh, I would love to hear how that mindset helps you in this week and see how you apply that in the week. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you feel compelled, feel free to drop a tip in the tip jar at The Bomberger on Venmo. And uh, be on the lookout for my Be Still and Listen book coming out uh, February 2nd. I'm really excited to share that with y'all. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful one. Thanks everybody for being here. I hope you have a great week and I hope this message serves you on your journey. See ya.